Hello, everybody. I'm Christine Young, one of your pastors on staff, and I'd like to welcome you to my home and our first weekend of Lake Deaton at Home. I am so glad that you have joined us this week. The worship team at Lake Deaton has been and will continue to work hard this month to create an all new online worship service that best connects with all of us who have been and who will continue to be watching online. You see, we felt like for the past few months that we've been paying less attention to all of you who are worshiping at home and more and more attention to all of the people who have worshiping, who have been worshiping in person. So again, welcome to Lake Deaton at Home. And like I said, this month we are working to create something new. And that means each week um, things might look a little different as we make little changes here and there as we hear from you. And hearing from you is something important. And you do that by signing into our online connection pad. And when you do that, we get your email. And that means you're going to receive a survey from us sometime in the week, very early in the week. And we ask that you fill it out as soon as you can because that's going to help us make changes for next weekend. Now, besides that announcement, I have a few others that I want to give you before we start worshiping. I do want to remind you about our Wednesday Grow Night. If you live in the Tri-County area of Central Florida, that's Sumter Lake in Marion County, we would like to invite you to join us for our Grow Night. We have two more weeks left. This week, I'm going to be teaching on liturgical colors, and the following week, Pastor Jim is going to be teaching on prayer. Um, uh, so all you need to do to come is sign up. You can do that online, and we ask that you do that by the Monday before that Wednesday. Now, if you're not local, we still want you to be part of our Grow Night program. So if the program's on Wednesday, that means that Thursday, the very next day, you can view the Grow Night program online on our website, and there'll be a link provided for you. Uh, we also want to remind you that if you're a regular part of our community, that you uh, can give your tithes and offerings online through our website or through the mail. And speaking of websites, we want you to know that we have a special website that we've created just for you. And, and it's easy to remember the website www.lakedeatonathome.com. Now we're just starting to build the website so each week there's going to be more and more content on it. Uh, but for now you can watch the worship services on the website, you can give on the website, you can do a prayer request on the website, and you can contact us on the website. And you can also see links for things like Grow Night on the website. So that's all the announcements and housekeeping housekeeping. I have for today. Um, we're going to do something special this week. We're going to join in on the proclamation of the word that happened on Saturday night. So you're going to tune in to the in-person worship service and see the proclamation happening on Saturday night or what happened on Saturday night. Now you're in for a treat, um, not because I'm preaching, but because I had a special guest join me uh, when I was preaching. And so that's going to be uh, one Wonderful. And so we're going to pray and then we're going to bounce on over to uh, Lake Deaton building for the proclamation of the word. And so pray with me. Gracious God, now I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to gather together all scattered out all over the place. Some of us are in Florida, even in the villages, but others of us are, are in places uh, uh, far away from Florida. Um, some of us are in the, the Midwest or, or up in the, in, the, in the northeast part of the country. And so I praise you, God, for bringing us all together in this online format um, so we can um, form this new community, Lake Deaton at Home. Um, I ask, Lord, that you would attend to each and every one of our prayer concerns that we bring into this place today. Some of us have joys that we want to share with you and others of us have concerns on our hearts for our loved ones or for ourselves and others of us bring hurts, habits, and hang-ups that we want to, uh, to, to bring towards you. Um, and Lord, we also pray for our local schools, for the, the students and the teachers and the parents. We ask that you would be with all of them as they get ready to go back to school. Many of them have already started back to school. And we ask, Lord, that you would send uh, resources Forces their way and that you'd give them um, um, endurance and strength for the school year and also Lord that you'd help us to, uh, to find ways to, to partner with our local schools. Um, we ask all of this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Christine Young, one of your pastors on staff, and I'm so pleased to be here this evening to bring you the word. The scripture for the inspiration for the message this evening comes from Psalm 150. Hear these words. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of the cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. As we enter into this sixth week of our sermon series on worship, we continue to take a deep look at what worship really is. We have spent four weeks building the load-bearing walls of worship. We've watched our house being built, these strong walls being put in place. We talked about the wall of the gathering, all of the things that prepare us and lead us up to the proclamation of the Word. We talked about the wall of the Word, God speaking to us, the reading of Scripture and hearing of Scripture, the message, the other elements that make up this mighty wall of the Word. We learned about the wall of the table of the Lord, and we talked about how this wall is strongest when we sit at the table with Jesus, learning how to love one another, learning how to serve one another, remembering all the mighty and powerful things that Jesus has done for us. And we learned about the wall of the sending, remembering how it's not a time for us to pack up our belongings and get ready to leave, but it's a time for us to be empowered, to go out into the world, to be a holy people, empowered to be the fruit for the healing of the nations. We spent those four weeks building this house, this safe house where we can all grow together. But last week, Pastor Jim asked us, what starts to make a house into a home? And it's when we start to personalize our space. It's when we unpack the boxes. It's when we start to hang up the pictures. It's when we start to move in the furniture. And that's what we're going to do for the rest of this series. We're going to personalize worship. Last week we talked about prayer, and this week we're going to talk about music. And I have to be honest with you, when I saw that I was down for the week to talk about music, I said, hmm, there has to be somebody more qualified to talk about music than me because I do not know very much about music. And if you've ever sat next to me while I'm singing, it's not a treat, not my spiritual gift. And when we were all just clapping before uh, with the song, I have to look around the room to find somebody else clapping because I cannot keep the beat to the music all by myself. I do not have gifts in music and song at all. So again, when I said, hmm, who do we know in our church who's gifted with music? Of course, I thought of our very own David. <laughs> so David, um, you know, I'm not any good at singing, <laughs> but I love to sing. Well, the good news is that the Bible tells us to raise a joyful noise unto the Lord, and it doesn't say anything about it having to be a beautiful noise. So, you know, it really, regardless of your ability or your age or anything like that, you can still praise. 
Well, that's a good thing. It's good that we don't have to have any special ability to sing and to be part of congregational singing. And for that matter, we didn't have to have any special ability last week to be part of prayer. It's just something that we all have to be willing to participate in. But there's something I'd like to know from you, David. I said I love to sing and that I love music. And in fact, every single week, there's always a new song on the radio that I would love to sing here in church. And sometimes I bring you songs, like a couple of weeks ago, I told you I loved Guard, no, I loved um, Good Grace. And we haven't sang it yet. I sing it all the time in my car, and it's always on my radio, but we've never sang it in worship. Or there's my favorite song, Crowded Table. We've only sung it twice. And I've asked you to sing it like every single week, (laughs) but we've only sung it twice. And then there's other songs that I don't hear on the radio very often, but I hear them here in church all the time. Like when we end service today, we're going to sing Graves into Gardens. And we sing that one a lot. We even sang that on Wednesday night. So David, how do you pick what gets into the service and what doesn't get into the service? Well, last year I did a, a, a grow night, a Wednesday grow night on how to choose a worship song. And I went through and kind of laid out a whole list of criteria that I, I kind of consider when I'm looking at worship music. But those can all be uh, condensed into really three assumptions that we have to make when choosing a worship song to kind of get our criteria in order. So the first one, we have the first assumption, not every song that is written is worthy to be sung. Now, I'm going to say this, that it's not worthy to be sung corporately. That, you know, just because it's something that we connect with personally mm. does not necessarily mean that it works in a corporate context. And so I want to, you know, let you know that that one worship song that really speaks to you, that is still very valid. Don't let that discourage you. But it doesn't necessarily fit when we're talking about a church movement or whatever we're doing in the space or for the sermon. So the second assumption that we have to consider is that all families of congregational songs are subject to equal scrutiny. So that no like one style of music is exempt from, from this examination, that the same level of critique has to be uh, uh, adapted, no matter if you're talking about a hymn or a modern song. And the best example I can give you is I, I cannot stand country music. No. I can't, like that's not my thing, cannot do it. And so if it were up to me, you know, to label what is good country music and bad country music, you can only assume how, ever, how, how many songs would end up in a certain category. Um, so it's good that it's not up to me to figure out what is good country music and bad country music. However, there is criteria, you know, for those who are actually within that genre and mm-hmm. who listen to that genre, that would know what is good music and what is bad music. And so when we're talking about a worship song, there's criteria that we have to consider that it makes it something good for corporate worship or makes it bad. Okay. And unfortunately, genre um, is, is a consideration we have to, we have to look at. So, um, so the last, last assumption, and we'll kind of flesh this out as we continue on today, but um, the last assumption we got to think about is the persons responsible. So myself and our worship uh, design team and things like that, the people responsible for the song selection are accountable to God for what they ask the community to sing. We want to make sure that every song that we choose is representative of the truth of the gospel, is representative of what we believe as, as the United Methodist Church and what we believe as the body of Lake Deaton and what we want to put out into the world. So we have to be very, we have to make considerations for the words we sing and how we say them and to make sure that what we're walking out of this space with and what we're walking into the world with is the gospel. So, so you it. mean my personal preference really doesn't come into play when you pick the songs and your personal preference doesn't come yeah, into exactly. play? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we, we haven't even done my favorite worship song ever, like, in, as a part of a worship service. So even my own, you know, my own taste and my own, it's like, the song I love, it's too long. It says too many words. Like, you know, so as far as things that we need the congregation to be able to grab mm-hmm. onto and walk away with, even my favorite worship song doesn't make the list. Okay. So it's, it is unfortunate, but I have to put aside my personal preferences in order to uh, be able to, to choose for what, what's good for corporate worship. 
Okay, so now that we know how you pick songs, I think it's important for us to address the idea of why we actually all need to sing together <laughs> during worship. Um, even with my lack of singing ability, I cannot imagine a worship service where there was no music at all. I think we sing because we were created to do it. I think we sing because we are called to do it. Verse 6 in the psalm says, Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. The psalm today calls us to praise the Lord and to do it with music. In the psalm we hear, Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. And praise him with loud clanging cymbals. And David, I have to tell you, I'm particularly pleased with the psalm and how it says, praise him with a clash of a cymbal or a clanging cymbal. So I know that even my lack of singing skills is still beautiful to God, just like a harp or strings or a flute Indeed, is beautiful yeah. as well. For sure. The thing that I love so much about this passage, too, is that it makes praise and worship so accessible. Um, so because what, what about those who can't physically sing? I mean, what about those who are, are deaf, where, where music is not, um, you know. So the definition of praise and worship in this passage is broad. It's uh, as much as we enjoy singing, what else does it say? It says to praise him with the tambourine and with dancing. And um, there is not one set way to define or describe how people are allowed to engage with, with music within the worship context. Uh, another layer of accessibility here is, is how many of these expressions of worship transcend language. Um, sometimes I think we forget that Jesus didn't speak English, <laughs> you know, and so our favorite worship song, uh, as much as it speaks to us, you know, it's, it's not, we need to remember, right, that when we are worshiping with the full body of Christ, when we are, we are joining into a global church, so to worship with horns and dancing and clanging cymbals, the only common tongue that we need is, is one of love for our creator and the desire to express that love. Music really is a powerful thing. For sure. And, and sometimes in order to fully understand how powerful music can be, uh, we need to examine our own preconceived notions of what is considered appropriate expressions of worship in music. Yeah. You know, music and songs are so much more than all of these things that we've already talked about, too. When it comes to the worship service, music and song is really about a conversation that we're having between God and us. And that conversation in the service comes with an upward movement or a downward movement. When you think of the gathering, there's so many different parts to it, but let's say, let's think about the offering. When we do the offering, that's an upward movement of us towards God. That's us responding to God and us giving back to God. And then um, in prayer, that can be an upward movement as well, us responding back to God. But that can also be a downward movement of God giving us revelation, that downward movement from God to us. And then the word, that's a solid downward movement. That's revelation from God to us. So you see how that works? Every part of the worship service, the big parts, the macro parts, and the little parts, the micro parts, are either an upward movement to God, us responding to God, or downward movement from God to us, God's revelation to us. So when we start to think about music and singing, well, that can be and is an upward movement or a downward movement as well. It's also response and revelation. It's that conversation between God and us. Within these two categories, we find special types of songs that work to carry worship from the beginning to the end. As we move from the gathering to the word, to the table of the Lord, to the sending, each song in the service works to be part of our conversation between ourselves and God. Each song is not an independent element. Each song has a function in the worship service. Each song is special. Mm -hmm. So in your worship handout today, um, or weekend handout? 
we, I want to make sure I get my lingo. Weekend handout. The weekend <laughs> handout. This one. Um, we asked you uh, to go ahead and think of your favorite worship song. It was, it's, it's that question number three. And I'd like to invite you to take a moment now, take a second, to write down one of those worship songs that really speaks to you. Crowded table. <laughs> That's <mine>. For sure. <laughs> and so as Pastor Christine said, each song is special. Um, it has a function that connects us to the other parts of the liturgy. And so as we go through some of these functions of music and of song, I, I want you to see how your favorite song fits the list. What category does it belong to? So first, uh, one of the most basic functions of music is to serve spe uh, specific liturgical purposes. So they don't just help independent worship elements flow together, but they are worship elements. Uh, the doxology and the Gloria Patri are examples of this. And we also have uh, modern worship songs like This I Believe, which is taken directly, the words of that are taken directly from the Apostles' Creed. Um, and so uh, these, these are, are specific elements that are part of the liturgy and mm -hmm. are, of music. Um, some songs function as proclamation. So when they announce truth and wonder and uh, work of the triune God, the work of the triune God, they declare and explain uh, some aspect of that nature and character or the activity of God. And so songs like this are, are like Hope Has a Name or Reckless Love or Living Hope or Glorious Day and, and the ways that God interacts um, and, and, and actually interacts with his creation. Um, songs also function as a prayer. So especially prayers of petition or intercession. And they articulate to God the emotions, the sentiments, and the aspirations of the congregation or of individuals. Songs like Do It Again or Another in the Fire, which examine the human condition in our doubt and our brokenness and, and appeal to God and his grace and his love and salvation. Uh, songs also serve the liturgical function of praise. <laughs> so they, they exalt God. God is exalted not only for who God is, but for what God has done. And many times these are, these are our opening songs. These are the songs that we come into the service and we're excited to sing and they just, they, they create an energy um, that allow us to, they, they energize us in our worship of our creator. And so the Lion and the Lamb, the song that we started off with today, are um, Greater You, Lord. Actually, I think we sang Lion and the Lamb last week. But Greater You, Lord, and, and King of Kings, and songs that just declare the wonder of who God is. Um, and so those are the songs that function as praise. And lastly, we have songs that are calls to action. And these are of great importance. These songs express the resolve of worshipers to live out the Christian faith in service of others. These songs provide a means of responding to how God is leading us. And so we have songs, and I know that this one is, is really dear to a lot of your hearts, especially if you went on Walk to Emmaus. But Here I Am, Lord, is, is the My perfect... favorite hymn. Yeah, perfect example of that, uh, of how we respond to God. Um, and then uh, Come to the Altar, which is, which is an invitation to lay the things that are holding us back at the feet of our God so we can move and, and be the church. And then also Run to the Father or I Surrender. These are great examples of, of songs that help us respond to what God is doing in our lives. And so I want you now again, so that, that kind of goes through the, the basic functions of a lot of the songs we sing within the worship context. And so I want you to now think of that song that you wrote down on your weekend handout. And I want you to think of the lyrics. I want you to think of what is this song actually saying? Because for me, whenever I'm looking at music and whenever I'm listening to worship music, there are certain songs that, that move me. There are certain songs that speak to me in where I'm at. And so I want you to think of, first off, what are those lyrics saying and how do they fit into these five categories? Or does it fit? Where does it fit? How does it fit? Part of liturgy, proclamation, prayer, praise, or is it a call to action? And what I want you to take from that is that as a song speaks to you, it's moving you in a direction. I know for me, the songs that speak to me help me to place where I'm at in my journey and where I'm at in my walk with God. Sometimes the songs that speak to me are songs that are calling to action. They are calling me, they're, they're inspiring me to move out into the world and to share that love, to be that, that um, example of grace and love and peace in the world. Sometimes they are songs that are more internal. They're, they're um, Con, uh, convicting me to, to look at myself and to make changes into how I live. 
And sometimes they are their songs of prayer that I am praying and intercessing for others and, and doing that. Sometimes these songs are speaking directly to where I'm at in my walk. And so I take that leading and I use that as, as a force for going deeper. That if this is speaking to me and this is moving me, maybe I need to feed into that idea. Maybe I need to, to go further in trying to figure out, okay, why is this what God is laying on my heart in this song today? Why is this lyric moving me into something deeper? Uh, and so then those songs and that music that is moving me so deeply is informing how I walk with God from the music into the world and, and to in, let that inspire my next steps. Um, so I just want to encourage you that as you're looking at this, this music and as you're looking at these songs and as you're looking at these lyrics that speak to you, ask God, why this song? <laughs> what is about this song that is speaking to me today? What do you want me to do uh, because of what I'm singing in this music today? Let's pray together. Father God, we are so thankful for this time that we gather, for the elements of the service that move us into a deeper communion with you, God, for the elements that point us to uh, the work that you would have us do in the world. God, I pray that as we um, meditate on these songs, as we meditate on music, and as we meditate on, on these elements of service, that sometimes we, we, don't, we don't take that time to really think of how is this, how does this connect me to what the greater liturgy is doing? How does this connect me to what you are moving the church into? God, I pray that you will give us revelation of how to interact and how to move and how to sing and how to clash cymbals and blow horns and just to be lost in praise and worship of you. God, let us be informed and aware of how you are leading us in music today. In your precious name, amen. amen. Hello and welcome. We're so excited that you're joining us for this new endeavor, Lake Dean Online. Let's go ahead and engage together in worship today.
today. We now move into this time of the table of the Lord. What an exciting time to take what we've learned, that we're, we're applying all these aspects of the, the elements of worship uh, from the gathering to the word, and now we're coming to center in at the table of the Lord. And as we do it, I invite you at home to 
uh, get some bread and some juice or water. I'm, I'm just using uh, a bun that we have and some water uh, for my uh, communion today. So whatever you have, whatever elements, it's really not important. What's important is the symbol of what they mean to us. So as we come to this place, uh, we remember that on the night that Jesus was preparing to give himself up for us, to, to take it all the way, to finish the work uh, so that we could be redeemed, so that we could have new life and abundant life. He sat down with his close friends and, and he took bread and he blessed the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Today, it's given for us as well. And then after the meal, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. When you come together, eat of the bread and drink of the cup and remember me. Today, we get to celebrate as we remember, which literally means to reenact, to, to re-enter into that gift of Jesus' love. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that right now you would just bless in everyone's home uh, the, the elements, this time, uh, this act of remembrance, of, of renewal, of re-engagement with your act of love. And may we, Lord, just be uh, renewed into the commitment and the, the memory that at the center of all things is, is you that you are our hope, you are our salvation. Uh, you are our strong arm in, in a world uh, that at times seems so hard to be in. In you, we find hope, and we find peace, and we find joy. In Christ's name, amen. So sisters and brothers, I invite you to eat and to drink, and to, to remember the gift of Jesus Christ. Well, we're coming to the end now of this first time of Lake Deaton at home. I hope you've had a great time that uh, this has been a, a wonderful uh, time of worship for you, of, of refocus and, and just connecting with the Lord as you connect with this community virtually. And as we, as we come to the conclusion of this first Sunday of this new way that we're doing ministry, we want to remind everyone to make sure that you sign in online at our connection, our online connection pad. Uh, and if you do that, you're going to receive the beta test uh, survey that will that you'll be able to fill out about the service today because next week we're going to do this service differently and in this next month we're doing it differently because we want to find a way that this service connects with the most people and so please go in and uh, fill out uh, the the online connection pad uh, uh, and receive your beta test fill out your beta test so we can hear your voice uh, because we truly want this to be a meaningful place, a wonderful community at home. So with that, I, I offer you now uh, this benediction. Lord, uh, be with us in, in all of our homes, in every place that we're joined together to, to be with you today. And as we go from this time, send us out into the world as, as your children that have been refreshed through your worship that we will flow out into the world as a mighty stream going out in the deep water to, to share your healing grace wherever we go. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God bless. Thank you all for being with us today. And we hope you have a blessed and wonderful week. God bless.